So you're at a point with your digestion where you are just at a loss and have tried everything. You've seen all the specialist doctors and you just can't find answers. You're still having digestive issues, especially if you have IBS, irritable bowel syndrome, where it's this constant vicious cycle where you're having these episodes where you're having lower abdominal pain, you're having gas and bloating, you're having, you know, diarrhea, explosive diarrhea. I mean, I know how it is. I grew up with, a, you know, IBS and those issues and was able to use these implementation as well as I use with my patients because I see patients all the time on digestive issues, especially IBS. So I want to share with you what are my top three things that I do implement when it comes to IBS. So before I get started, I want to introduce myself. I'm Dr. Legrand. As I said before, I do see patients a lot with IBS and other digestive issues. And here at Nature's Health Clinic, that's what we focus a lot on. But before we get started and dive into my top three things that I do recommend for people with IBS to be able to be able to treat it more, is I have a downloadable free guide. And this free guide is my ultimate digestive health guide that you can implement basically goes over the labs that you should be running as well as what supplements nutrients as well as foods to implement and foods to avoid if you have digestive issues so you can download that in the description below so my top three things that i recommend now there's a lot of things i recommend but i want to kind of focus on these three things that you should be implementing if you do have ibs the very first thing that I see an issue all the time, even when I was having really severe IBS issues, my the worst it got was actually in medical school because it was really stressful. So the very first thing that I would say is that you need to learn how to do reduce stress with your IBS. Because with irritable bowel syndrome, there's this vicious cycle. And it's a common question that I get is the IBS, you know, caused by the anxiety or is it the digestion causing the anxiety? It's this vicious cycle. And I say it's it's a combo of both, kind of going back and forth. And we have to focus on both the digestion as well as reducing stress because they do contribute to back and forth with each other. And what you need to be implementing is stress reducing exercises. So whether that's breathing exercises or even sometimes I tell my patients if they are constantly always stressed they need to have you know what i call is free writing where you take a piece of paper and for five ten minutes just write what's ever on your mind and then destroy it it's a way to kind of let go of things it's kind of a free therapy session to kind of let things go kind of reduce the stress or using another outlet like going exercise that can help reduce stress that's something i did a lot now sometimes you know that can be an issue if you have really severe IBS issues and you're going for a run and guess what you got explosive diarrhea coming along I've been in that you know I've been in that boat and it's it's not a pretty situation to have to try to find somewhere to go to the bathroom when you're going running so maybe running might not be an option but maybe just to going to the gym to lift weights stuff like that to be able to kind of just calm the nerves down are some really good things. Also, even taking like Nervines, anxiolytic herbs can be really helpful to kind of calm the nervous system so that you're not kicking in always because usually when you're going to have higher stress, that will trigger the IBS and those symptoms. So it's really important to be able to do that. And if you're dealing with really high anxiety, panic attacks, you should see a therapist, you should see a doctor about this to be able to also focus on that, not just on the digest of the gut, issue stuff. The second thing is what's really important is implementing good eating habits and also certain tricks to it. So with people with IBS or anybody with digestive issues, what's really, really important is you got to understand if you have a sensitive stomach and you have these explosive diarrheas or you have, you know, a lower abdominal pain or any kind of abdominal pain, gas and bloating, you have a sensitive stomach. And what you need to do is eat foods a little bit more separate and what I mean by that is not having things like sugar and proteins together uh, because proteins, our body takes time to digest. It's a slow process where sugars, whether it's fruit or, you know, simple, you know, carbs, sugars, usually with those, our body processes that really quickly. So having those two extremes really can be an issue in the digestive tract and causing that explosive diarrhea or having too much sugar at once. I know for me, one of my biggest contributing factors of my IBS was I used to love having juice with my meals. You see, I have apple juice or orange juice. And after my meal, I would always have an explosive diarrhea IBS situation. And once I finally got rid of that, started also separating a lot of the sugars because I used to even have fruit with also my meals. 
And once I separate that, that made a huge difference. And this, I see this all the time when I work with patients. When we do that, sometimes that's the, the biggest contributing factor and that's it. Not for everybody, but I'm just saying that it can be the possibility. And so doing that. The other thing is, um, you know, if you are really having a sense of stomach, sometimes have eating pre-digested food. So what I mean by that is having it cooked, either steam cooked, blended. Uh, that's what I mean by pre-digested. If, you know, eating something raw, like raw vegetables might be too harsh on the body or even eating a big steak, maybe slow cooking it where it's falling off the bone or, you know, falling apart is going to be easier to digest. So doing that as well is going to be really crucial. The other thing that I would suggest is that you need to always keep your liquids away from your main course meals. The reason why is because a lot of people with IBS or any digestive issues, they tend to have not enough stomach acidity to be able to break down their foods. And if you're drinking water while you're eating your main course meal or any kind of beverage, that starts watering it down. And so it's hard to break down. And so then you also have inflammation going through your digestive tract because it didn't break it down properly because it didn't have enough stomach acidity. That becomes a big issue. So make sure to keep your, your water or your beverage away from your main course meal. At least 10 minutes. Don't have So don't be drinking anything while you're eating. A lot of people do that, but it's good to try to avoid doing that if you have IBS or any other kind of digestive issues. The third thing that I'm going to talk about what can really help with your IBS or any kind of digestive issues is certain supplements that I do highly recommend. And I mentioned about the digestion or the acidity problem in your stomach, where a lot of people I find who have digestive issues or IBS especially will tend to not have enough stomach acidity. And this can cause heartburn. It can also cause inflammation throughout your digestive tract, which causes those, uh, you know, gassing and bloating and also explosion of diarrhea. But what you need to be implementing is something like HCL, especially if a combo of like betaine and pepsin and HCL doing those combos because Betaine and pepsin uh, are also, those are enzymes that help with reduce inflammation in the digestive tract. And HCL is hydrochloric acid, but basically, um, you know, HCL can help really bring up the acidity to help break down the foods. And then the other thing that I do highly recommend is doing a digestive enzyme or a pancreatic enzyme uh, to be able to help break down all your macronutrients, your proteins, fats, and carbs. A lot of people with digestive issues tend to not be producing enough digestive enzymes. So by taking that after your meals can be really, really beneficial and help in breaking it down so you're not having inflammation throughout your digestive tract every time that you're eating. The other thing that I do highly recommend is bitter herbs. So bitter herbs, so this could be like dandelion root, uh, that you can take basically more in a liquid form is what I recommend. And when you take the actual bitter herbs, this can really stimulate uh, digestive enzymes naturally. It also stimulates the liver and the gallbladder, which helps process our fat. So a lot of people with IBS tend to have a hard time processing fat. And so the gallbladder is kind of really contributing to helping with that. And by use, taking bitter herbs before each meal can really, really help with that. It also can heal the digestive tract system. The last thing that I would say that could be really helpful if you tend to run more constipated with your IBS. So there's definitely there's the mixed type where you're both constipated and have diarrhea or you could be just the constipated type or just the diarrhea type. But if you are the constipated type, you know, magnesium can be really helpful, uh, especially for digestion. But you got to make sure you're taking the right kind of type of magnesium. Usually I suggest if you run tend to run more acidic, then you should be taking something like magnesium oxide if you tend to run more alkaline and what i mean by that is basically your urine ph levels tend to be more alkaline this it's better to take something like magnesium citrate because that's more of a citifier just like the hcl to help kind of bring down the basically help uh, produce more acidity in your stomach to help break down your foods. So these are things that I do highly recommend as far as what you need to implement if you have IBS issues. Now, if you're looking for other digestive help, I do have a free downloadable guide in the description below that basically goes over the labs that you should be running, what nutrients and supplements you should be implementing, as well as what foods to implement and what foods to avoid if you have digestive issues. So that's in the description below. Until next time, this is Dr. Grand signing out here at Nature's Health Clinic, and I will see you in the next video. Thanks. Bye.